it is my pleasure once again to come to you. This is our prior night, Love and Faith World Outreach Ministries. And why do we come on a night like this? We come to pray, not because out of, we come not because of tradition. We come to pray, not because we don't have anything else to do. We come to pray, not because we are bored and that we need a change of environment. We come to pray because it is the will of God. It is the will of God for us to pray. It's the command that we pray. We pray to access the mind of God. We pray to know more about God, to come into a closer relationship with God. We come to pray so that we can petition God to change the circumstances around us and for us. We come to God so that we can develop a stable and healthy relationship with him. We come to pray so that we can service our prayer altar. The altar that you pray at can alter your destiny. Listen to me again. The altar at which you pray can alter your destiny. My God. Believers, this is the month of October, October 2024, and the doors are wide open to us. It's an adventure to be with the Holy Spirit. As we are, as we come tonight, we open our hearts wide, my God. And Team 9 will lead us for the month of October. And I'm going to hand over to Prophet Bernard the Law. He will tell you some more about Team 9 and take us into tonight's proceedings. I'm going to tell you something. If you have a seatbelt, strap it on because the flight is going to take off and I don't want you to fall out of your seat. Praise God Almighty. It's a good way. I say it in a good way. Thank God you. is doing great things. And I'm so happy to be a part of the move of God. I don't want anybody to tell me about the move of God, that it missed me. I want to be in the center. My God, I want to be there. If, if the Spirit of God is moving, I want to be right there. I know you feel the excitement too. And we praise God. So over to you now, Prophet the Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Rev. Jen. Thank you so much. I say good evening to you and to our host in the background as well and to everyone joining us at this moment and every person who is here online with us. I greet you in Jesus' name. We are team number nine and we are tasked with leading prayer for the month of October and with me are Sister Mighty, Sister Alia, uh, Pastor George and Pastor George Scott. Um, we have uh, Minister Georgia Scott as well, uh, Brother Ryan and his wife, Sister Shamil Bailey. And we thank God for each and every one who is going to be helping to stand on the wall this month of October. I want to thank you for allowing us to pray for you, to pray with you, and also to come to you with the word of the Lord in the various ways that it will be coming to you this month through the various team members. I am tasked with starting off the leg tonight and running with the baton and possibly passing it over to another team member. <laughs> But as Sister, sorry, as Rev. Jen said tonight, the flight is going to take off. <laughs> That's, <laughs> I always love when Rev. says these things, you know. Great expectation pulls on the anointing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I was looking at my 
my outline for tonight and realize that I'm going to have to do this flight in two parts so that we can simmer what God is saying to us. So we're going to have a first flight, flight and then we're going to have a stopover. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I yeah, promise I'm going you. To disembark. I am not going to disembark. We're not going to disembark the plane. We're just going to allow the air condition to run as we stay in the spirit. But tonight, um, I am tasked with a very serious pastoral and apostolic assignment of letting patience do her work. What a topic. Let patience do her work. And this month of October, we will be zoning in on patience and what it is and how we can really bring this grace, this fruit, this character into our lives. And so I'll be beginning that journey and other members of the team will also be coming to speak with you on different aspects of patience as the Holy Spirit has put it in their heart. We want to begin tonight from James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. And as I said, I want to really just be patient with this topic and not rush it. So we're going to begin from James chapter 1, and we're going to read from verses 1 to verse 4. And my focus really will be verses 2 to 4. So James 1, verse 1 to 4 says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And let me just hold it right there. Now, I came across one writer called Chuck Swindoll. And he says that the book of James is one of, is one of those books that encourages God's people to act like God's people. It is focusing on the practicality of faith being lived out in our Christian walk. And it is screaming from the pages of the book of James, faith, faith, faith. Now, nestled in that, uh, that, that, that conglomerate of faith is that little word called patience. Now, in these writings that James tell us about, the testing of our faith by way of trials and how we need to allow patience to perform our work her perfect work, not just any kind of work, but her perfect work in us. Now, if you think about doing a perfect work, you're going to think about all those tools that you're going to get to chisel away at the, let's say, a piece of rock that you're sculpting or carving and all those tools that you're going to be using to sculpt that rock. And you're going to be breaking this here and breaking that there and sanding this here and chiseling that there and making holes there. So you can have an, an understanding. And when the sculptor is done, he's going to brush it off and possibly paint it up and, and put on a few little decors on it. Now, I wonder why James, in his description of patience, he did something that you know, I, I found very funny that he personified patience with a feminine pronoun. <laughs> yes. So I'm wondering if James could be telling us something about the nature of women versus men and their ability to handle tough situations. I don't know if James is hinting and saying women are more patient than men in certain aspects of life, but I leave that to you to decide lest I anger anybody tonight. <laughs> now, we want to tonight examine briefly, um, and I would, I'm just going into the definition of patience and what it is. And pulling out from that a few keywords from our passage that we have just read. 
So the first one I want to look at is temptation. What is temptation? Because these words, we need to understand them so that we can understand what is happening by way of trials and what is being perfected in us. So the first word is temptation. The King James Version uses temptation. Some other versions uses trials. But let's look at this for a moment. Temptation is the desire to do or to have something you know you should not have. However, in James 1 verse 2, he uses the Greek word perasmos. Perasmos means putting to proof. It means trial. It means calamity, affliction, or internal temptation to sin. Now, in the context of James's passage, it is being used to refer to the trials that are faced by believers, the afflictions, the calamities. The proofing, not the temptation to sin. So our focus is not on temptations that causes sin, but trials that prove our faith. That's a whole different kettle of fish. And so a trial is a test over a limited period of time to prove the authenticity and the suitability of something or someone. So in this context, it is a proof test. So the believers are going through a proof test. Number two word is the word faith. What is faith? It is great trust or confidence in someone or something. So this is the Greek word pistis. And it means what? Firm conviction, firm persuasion, as well as one's religion. But in this passage, it speaks to our conviction and our belief in Jesus Christ and how we daily live out that belief and our trust that we have in him and through our obedience to his word, faith, our confidence, our conviction, our persuasion that is firm in Jesus Christ. The third word is the word patience. Patience is the ability to accept delay, suffering, or annoyance without complaining or becoming angry. Now, let's look at that again. It is the ability to accept delay, suffering, or annoyance without complaining or becoming angry. So this word, I love to look at the origins of words. Greek word makrothumio, it means to not lose heart. So patience here means do not lose heart. That is, do not be discouraged. Now, when you hear somebody say to you, don't be discouraged in the midst of affliction, <laughs> trials, calamity, or the proofing of your faith, you want to take up something and give them a good hard slap that their head will come back around wherever it turned. You see, because in reality, this is one of the most difficult things to do. But in Christ, as we are built up by his spirit, we are able to accomplish macrothumio or patience, or we are able to not lose heart. It is through the fruit of the Spirit working in our life that this is going to happen. Now, there is another word called discouragement. Now, seeing that we mentioned the word discouragement a little bit earlier, let's also define it. It is a loss of confidence or enthusiasm. Do we not lose enthusiasm when we go through the various trials that we face? Of course we do. Some of us do. And some people lose their confidence as well because they blame God for what they are going through because of their lack of understanding concerning the thing that they are facing. So discouragement is dispiritedness. It is an attempt to prevent something from happening by creating difficulties 
or showing disapproval. So discouragement is what the devil wants to happen to us when we go through trials. But God has a different purpose for trials. This means that whatever we are facing, we must come to the level where we know the God purpose. Because if we don't get this, then what's going to happen is that we are going to be downhearted, dejected, depressed, demoralized, disappointed, and despaired. So that's discouragement. Now, from these four words that I gave you, temptation or trials, rather, faith, patience, and discouragement, there is a comprehensive message that begins to emerge now from the book of James. We can pick any one of these words and preach a series of messages from them. Yes? But James wants us to learn something very early on in the book, something about faith and trials, patience, discouragement, zeal, and God's intent for all of this versus what the devil would like to see happen to us. Now, James wants us to see the connection between faith and patience, as well as their relationship to trials and how these things connect to the perfect work of God. Because God is doing a perfect work in us. And James from the very onset tells us, listen, there is a perfection that is being worked in us by the things you are facing. He comes right off the bat and let us know God is up to something in your life. And this is one of the things I want you to get tonight. God is up to something in my life. Whatever I am facing, whatever I am going through, God is up to something in my life. Now, the truth is that when you mention the word trials, trials, just mention that word to any believer, it will scare the believer. If you come and you give a prophetic word to a believer and say, thus saith the Lord, you're going to go through some trials or you're going to encounter some trials, you would wish that you never heard that word at all. You would wish that you never came for that prophetic word at all. It is better you didn't know and you encounter it than having been told, hey, I'm going to go through trials. No, I don't want to hear that word. It scares the believer who does not have what I call an understanding of the inner workings of the Spirit of God. There is an inner working of the Spirit of God through every situation that we might deem negative. And this is where the believer's mindset now has to shift. This is where the believer now comes into maturity, getting into that place where they are seeing things through the lens of the spirit and not through the lens of the carnal eyes or the lens of the world or the lens of others. No, we have to see things through the Spirit's lens. Now, I don't think there is any believer who is openly willing to welcome trials in their life. I don't know of any such believer. I've never met one of them. If you have, please set up an appointment for me because there's something I need to find out from them. How do you openly welcome trials? You, you, you don't. Because we are conditioned as human beings to live in comfort. <laughs> we were created in comfort. And there is no way that you or I is going to openly welcome trials in our life. In fact, if you get a message that you are going to go through trials, I guarantee you secretly, you are going to be praying. I cut down that trial in the name of Jesus. I come against that trial in the mighty name. I will not go through it. You will pray. You will pray to not go through trials. Because it's not something that you are going to welcome. 
So if I were in the congregation, when James was preaching this message, it would have annoyed me tremendously. I'm telling you the truth. I will say point of order, Uncle James. Um, what did you just say right there? So again, what do you mean by we gonna go through trials? Point of order. You sure is God you got that message from or you're making it up? You sure, Uncle James? Because you see me, I, I not digging that trial thing, yeah? I, I didn't come to Jesus for this trial business that you talking about. I thought that Jesus having died for our sins, erase all them trial business that you talking. Because you see, none of us want to go through trials. None of us. So on the surface, it would seem as if James wants us to go through some difficult times. And the apostle is trying to make it sound, this message sound like those people who think that you must suffer along your journey because they suffered along theirs. Listen to me. If, if, if I was in James's church, I would say, James, you see, because you suffer some something there, you want me to suffer too. I say, I'm not, I not into that with you. I'm not into that. That message, I ain't receiving it. Eh? I, I can receive and I can and I can uh, reject this one. I am not on the business of receiving it. So I'm going to scream at Brother James for you right now and tell Brother James, I don't want no trial. Now, here is the problem with that. It is not Brother James that is talking. <laughs> that's, that's the problem with that one. You can scream at Brother James and say, life is already hard and stressful. Please and thank you. Do not add anything more to me in the name of faith and patience. You can tell James that. But the problem is, is not James talking. You can tell James that you reject the message. But the problem is that James is only the messenger. You can tell James that you don't want no trials. That you don't want no proofing of your faith. But the problem is James is not the one doing it. You can tell James that you would rather see some manifestations of some things that you have already believed for. That you have already sown seed for. That you have already uh, prayed for. Rather than to come in to tell me I need patience. I think I have enough. I think I'm already patient. I think my patience bucket is now full of patience. But James is saying to us that God is going to prove you. So the moment you start throwing this word around, this patience word around, this trials word around, the Bible study is gone down, uh, Sunday school empty, prayer meeting Suddenly, don't have nobody. Church service, <laughs> we absent for this series. Because the truth is that I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not digging what you're saying right here. Me, I'm not receiving that. I can't, too much already in my ears. So I know deep down inside that I'm going to have to go through something the moment you begin to say this. And it is not going to be removed until that thing called trial has fully done its work. And that's what James is telling us. That believer, my brothers, my sisters, there are some things that God is going to allow, permit, that you're going to fall into, that is going to come your way, that you weren't prepared for, that you don't want, that you would not look for, that you would not welcome, that you're going to have to go through until it has done its work. Pray all you want, fast all you want, sow seeds all you want. Look for all the apostles and prophets with power all you want. The truth is that patience will have her perfect work. So there's a message that James is saying. He's saying, get ready for the trial of your faith. You say you are convicted. You say you are persuaded in Christ. 
You say you believe him. You say you are walking with him. Okay, it will be proven. It will be tested. Now, I don't want to scare you. I'm just the messenger, like James was the messenger. But just to be a realistic and to say to you that I understand how you feel because I just feels it too. It's not like any of us escape James chapter 1. It's not like you can rip it out of the Bible and say, oh, this part don't belong to me. I'm not reading this. This, that's going, this is not going to be a part of me. No, every one of us, we're going to experience certain trials. But you see, we have to let go and come out of the feelings. And then we have to go up a notch higher. We have to go up a notch higher to the mind of Christ and see the will of God and the plan of God for us. So we can take hope if James has scared you. And trust me, this is scary because it's coming from the apostle. If James scares you, then go to Romans 8.28 where he says, And we know that all things work it together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. This is one of the verses that you're going to have to live by as you go through your trying situations. Now, as we grasp the work of patience and what it is doing in our life, let's look at it now. What really is patience? Because I've just said to you, look, this thing is going to happen. No matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, no matter how you try to secure yourself from trials, it's going to happen. So what is patience? Let's find out what patience is. Five things I'm going to give to you and then we're going to pray. Number one, patience is the ability to endure. You see, God wants us to have the ability to endure. To endure means to suffer something unpleasant, painful, or, di or difficult. It means to undergo, to go through, to live through, to experience, to withstand, to put up with, to tolerate, to bear. It is the ability to endure, meaning that whatever you are going through is not going to destroy you because I can endure it. Number two, patience is a part of the fruit of the spirit. It is called long suffering. <laughs> yes, not long blessing, long suffering. Mm hmm. Long suffering is love at work, putting up with unpleasant, difficult, and hard to live with people. Let me say it again. Long suffering is love at work, putting up with unpleasant people, difficult people, and hard to live with people. So this brings into focus what we call perseverance. Perseverance brings into focus our ability to overcome the various tests and trials that we will encounter that will expose any weak areas in our personality. So there, this thing called patience, it is on a mission to expose the weaknesses in our personality. That's why we need the fruit of the Spirit long suffering slash patience slash perseverance so that the weaknesses in our personality can be swallowed up by the character of the spirit patience is tolerance it is the willingness to accept behavior and beliefs that are different from your own although you might not agree or approve of them. 
I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to approve of it. But I accept that this is what you believe. I accept that this is how you are. That's tolerance for you. And it's coming out of patience. So it gives you the grace to tolerate some things. Because truth is that there are some people that will come into your life that you just gonna have to tolerate. <laughs> because they're not gonna change. It's like the thorns in your flesh to keep you sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and water baptized. They're not going to change. They are the ones that God has left by your side to keep you on the straight and narrow. They're not going to change. No matter how you beg them, plead them, counsel them, pray for them, they stay the same way. You need patience to deal with them. You can't drive them out of the church. You can't dis disfellowship them. You can't turn them into your enemies. You're just going to have to tolerate them. It's not just the pastor who have to tolerate them. You too. You too go have to tolerate them because they are your brothers and your sisters. Mm -hmm. Number four word, patience is restraint. It is the ability to remain calm and controlled in our behavior even when the situation is screaming at you to retaliate and to revenge. Remember what the Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, see the Lord. It means that as a believer, we don't have the right to revenge. We don't have the right to vengeance. We don't have that right because what God has given us is restraint. Be calm, be controlled in your behavior, in your reaction to the people, to the situation, even though it is screaming at you to retaliate and to revenge. And number five, uh, fifth word is the word mercy. Patience is mercy. Mercy is the attribute of God given to us, which causes us to be slow in anger, gracious and rich in kindness. Exodus 34, verse 6 to 7. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, yes, patient, sit there, patient, and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation. How did God describe himself? He described himself as a patient God. Now, mercy is that attribute that causes us to forgive. Now, if you look at patience, being mercy, restraint, tolerance, the fruit of the spirit, the ability to endure, then what you are seeing right here is that you are going to experience some issues that will require time, that will require effort, that will require you to be merciful, to be tolerant, to be enduring. Yes? to be restrained or restraining is going to require you to exercise the nature of our father. And this is what James is telling us. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into different trials. Not just one. He said different trials diverse trials which means that every trial that you face the underlying underpinning worker is the spirit of god doing what chiseling away your carnality my carnality my immorality my flesh so that 
the spirit can now begin its outward growth in me. That when they see you, that when they see me, they are seeing Christ. Let patience have her work. I'm going to stop here for tonight. And we're going to pick up again as we look at these verses in detail. Verse number two and verse number three. We're going to dissect it and we're going to go into it in detail. But we need to pray some prayers tonight as we simmer on this introduction to this whole aspect of patience as we are asking God to bring this character, this fruit, this grace, this anointing into our lives. I want to lead off with our prayers tonight as we ask the Lord, Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Bible says that the enemy, the evil one, he's the one that seeks to bring us into temptation. God tempts no man. God cannot be tempted by sin. And the enemy wants to capitalize on the things that we are going through so that we can sin. But God wants us to go through these things so that our faith can be proven. I want you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are the Lord that leads us into victory. That you are the God that causes us to overcome. That you are the one that deliver us from the evil one and the wickedness of the enemy. Father, the enemy seeks to capitalize on the various things that we go through in life to bring us to the point where we sin against you. To cause those things, Lord, to not be tests that prove our faith, but temptations that causes us to fail in our faith. Father, I pray tonight that where the enemy has set traps for us, even in the various trials that we face, the various situations that we go through, the Lord, you'll provide a way of escape for us. Lord, we know that there are time frames attached to the various things that we endure and encounter in this life. But Lord, in that time frame, the devil also wants to destroy us so that we will not overcome and go to the next level and increase and be elevated in you and in your spirit. His mission is to make us fail, but your mission is to make us succeed. Father, I ask now that just as your word says that whenever temptations come, there is a way of escape. Open our eyes to see it. Open our eyes to see, Lord God, the way of escape. Father, cause us not to be so blinded and driven, Lord, by our own desires, our own lusts, our own carnality. The Lord, we become so enraptured, Lord, in the deceit of the enemy that we fall prey to his devices. Father, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Every day, Lord, that you give us breath, every hour, Lord, that you cause us to be alive, Lord, steer us away from evil. Shift us away from the evil one. Protect us, Lord, from the enemy and his devices and open our eyes that we, Lord, may understand the inner workings of the Spirit of God through the various things that we are facing. I thank you, Lord, that from today, Lord, we are 
insulated from the enemy's arrows and his attacks, his deceits, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Alia, who is one of our team members, to please pray for us that the Lord will increase our faith that our faith in him might be increased. Sister Alia. Good night, everyone. Hallelujah. Lord, you are God and God alone. Beside you, Lord, there is no other God. Father, we look to you for everything. Everything is in you. And so tonight, Lord, I come to you. We all come to you tonight, Father, for increasing of faith. Father, I ask you tonight to increase our faith in you. Yes, Lord. Lord, without you, we cannot do it. Lord, on our own, we cannot do it. Lord Jesus said, without him, without him, we can do nothing. On that basis, Lord, we come to you and we ask you to increase our faith in you. Lord, when our faith is failing, increase it, Lord. Lord, we go through trials and we go through tests and we go through, Lord God, all kind of rot and bump and, 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 and all things are turmoil and storm in our life, Lord. And it come at times, Lord, when we want to give up. When it seems like, Lord God Almighty, our faith is getting weak, Lord God Almighty. But I ask you tonight, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you, O oh God, would strengthen our faith in you, God, and give us, Lord God Almighty, an increase and overflow of faith in you, God. We rest upon you and we lean upon you, O oh God. So, Father God, some of us are weak, and some of us, Lord God, you said the weak should uphold, the strong should uphold those that are weak in the faith. And so, God, Father God, tonight, Almighty God, sometimes, Almighty God, even us, Lord God, the one that we think we are strong, Lord God Almighty, we cannot do it without you. We, Our faith, Almighty God, seems as if it wants to fail us, O God Almighty. But tonight, I call upon you, Almighty God, the God of faith, the one who we look to, the one who strengthen us, O God, the one almighty God that we cannot do without Lord God in our own self we cannot do it oh God in our own might we cannot do it oh God so we draw from you tonight oh God we draw our faith from you tonight oh God we look to you tonight oh God to strengthen us to hold us up with your strong arm oh God in the name of Jesus Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord God, this faith does not come easy. Father God, it does not come lightly, Father. So Lord God Almighty, without you, we cannot do it. We look to you tonight, oh God. We look to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, whatever the enemy has come with you, almighty oh God. He has come before you, mighty God, concerning our faith, God, accusing us that our faith is weak, almighty oh God. Look at them. He was, he, he, you can just imagine he's saying, look at your daughter. Look at her. Oh, she is weak. She have no faith. But Father God, whatever 
whatever accusation he has brought before you concerning our faith tonight father god jesus died for our faith jesus shed his blood on calvary's cross almighty god and lord god let that blood of jesus tonight speak concerning each and every one of us faith on this platform tonight let the blood of jesus speak concerning the body of christ we don't pray for ourselves tonight but we pray for others in christ because we are one so let that blood of jesus that flows on calvary cross tonight almighty god speak in the courts of heaven concerning our faith tonight mighty god because we are not weak you said let the weak said we are strong and let the poor said we are rich we are faith tonight in jesus name so i prophesy tonight that each and every one of us are built up in faith in jesus christ because you are our faith regardless of what the enemy want to tell us and to speak in our ears tonight i command that faith move upon us faith over shadow us faith over power us that we will come into the fullness of the faith that you want us to walk in because you said we do not walk by sight we walk by faith mighty god so we are walking in faith tonight almighty god in the name of jesus we walk by faith we will walk by faith we will always walk by faith so tonight we are faith each and every one of us on this platform are faith the body of christ are faith no matter what the enemy is speaking to our ears tonight we have faith and that blood of jesus that speak for us in the courts of heaven lord god almighty let it speak concerning our faith tonight that we will never fail that we will never run short of faith we are built up on faith we are built up on faith because jesus is our faith we trust in you oh god we depend on you and rely on you and we trust in you oh god in jesus name because there's no one else to trust in to believe in lord god almighty so we rest in you tonight knowing that our faith is already being built up in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. earlier we spoke about patience there uh, is the ability to yeah. accept delay to accept suffering or annoyance without complaining or becoming angry to not be discouraged to not lose heart i want you to join me again in prayer i'm gonna put the prayer point in the chat here as we pray again lord give me the grace to accept things i cannot change remove the spirit of complaint the spirit of anger mm -hmm. and the spirit of annoyance from me yes. remove these things from me let me ask your sister peter gay could be so gracious to join us in praying this prayer point sister peter gay are you able to join us in prayer thank you prophet good night good night everyone good night ah to god be the glory to god be the glory hallelujah 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 glory to god father we come before your throne of grace tonight oh god we give you thanks for the gift of life mighty god we thank you lord for your love and we thank you god for your kindness towards us father god even sometimes when we're so disobedient and we don't even understand everything mighty god you yourself is so patient with us you yourself is so faithful towards us and so lord we come tonight to give you praise to give you glory and to give you honor father we ask tonight mighty god that you give us 
the grace, O oh God, to accept the things, mighty God, that we cannot change. And so, Father God, as we submit our spirit to you, Lord, we ask that you remove every spirit of anger, mighty God, every spirit of annoyance, mighty God, every spirit of complaint, mighty God. And Father God, that we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Father God, that we will understand and discern your will for our season, mighty God. Mighty God, that we understand your will and plan for every assignment, mighty God, that we go through. Father God, we thank you, Lord, mighty God, for patience, mighty God, the spirit of patience, mighty God. Father God, you said, mighty God, patience, mighty God, must run its full course, mighty God, in our life, that we can come into faith, mighty God. Father God, you said, faith, mighty God, is hearing and hearing the voice of God. Father God, we thank you, mighty God, that love and faith, which is the two key pillars of the kingdom of God. Father God, we ask that you build that up in our life. We build that spirit up in our life, mighty God, that we can stand against the enemy, mighty God, and its scheme, mighty God, and its attack, mighty God. Father God, you have given us the power of authority, mighty God, to take dominion, mighty God, to speak your word, oh God. Father God, there are times when we are tempted mighty god in situation but father god when your word and the holy spirit come mighty god and remind us of your will and your promises father god let our spirit man mighty god be turned away from every sinful nature mighty god even when temptation come oh god let our spirit man turn away oh god because the holy ghost would have come mighty god and give us the prompting mighty god father god we ask of you mighty god lord that mighty god you said patience mighty god as prophet says patience expose our weakness father god i pray mighty god that we will be able to identify what you're saying to us when we are going through that long suffering mighty god turn away from complaint turn away from anger turn away from pointing fingers mighty god but father god turn to you seeking understanding mighty god lord it's because of lack of understanding mighty god that we walk out of purpose mighty god and our season before time mighty god and so father god it causes us a time to go back around that mountain but father god we decree and declare right now god as you have come to let us understand your word mighty god that patience mighty god must complete its work in us mighty god that we wanting of nothing and so father god i pray into in the name of jesus lord that you will deliver us from the elements of this world oh god as we come to understand who you are in us and who we are in you father god patient cause us to come into sonship mighty god cause us to come into sonship by the leading of your spirit mighty god and so father god i pray mighty god that all of us oh god will sit with the holy spirit having the holy spirit ministering to our spirit that we will understand mighty god and not seek a way of escape to complain to anger mighty god to frustration to annoyance mighty god long suffering is a part of the spirit the fruit of the spirit father god give us the strength to endure long suffering in the name of jesus lord it's what mold us to become in christ nature christ character and so father god help us to submit to you help us not to look at every situation as something negative but father god to look at it as you oh god increasing us mighty god in your character in building our spirit man in building our faith and our trust in you lord father god help us from here on mighty god as your word come with clarity mighty god help us never to fail 
any test mighty God that you will put before us but father God to pass those tests with flying colors mighty God by submitting to the Holy Spirit and allowing ourselves mighty God to honor your obedience in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth father we thank you tonight for your word oh God that come with such clarity mighty God help us mighty God to let that word sit in our heart mighty God it's a season mighty God for the fullness of time to be to come in our life mighty God no longer we will we will be in bondage no longer mighty God with the enemy mighty God entangled us mighty God we will not mighty God um, of delay mighty God we will not be denied from our from your purpose and plan for our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth father God we who are weak Lord I ask that you give us the strength to endure mighty God let the spirit of weariness lift from us oh God give us your supernatural strength mighty God strength beyond human understanding mighty God that we will go through mighty God with your strength in the name of jesus father god help us to wait on you god mighty god for patience mighty god to complete it course they said they that wait upon you shall renew their strength and mount up with wings like an eagle father god in waiting you're saying that we will lose strength but father god if we continue to trust and believe oh god we will come to the point where we'll be mounting up with wings like an eagle in the name of jesus christ of nazareth it. Father, we thank you tonight for your word, oh God. Your word that come with such clarity, mighty God. Yes, trials are, are before us, mighty God, to prove our faith, oh God. Yes, God, if we're hearing when you speak, if we're obeying when you speak, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh Father God, help us not to be distracted, mighty God, by the negative voice, mighty God. But Father God, help us to zone into your voice, mighty God, and to shut out the voice of the temper in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Help us, mighty God, to tune into your frequency, mighty God, that we will honor your way, we will honor your will, and we will honor your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father God, and we ask, mighty God, that you release your spirit of peace. You release your spirit of joy. You release your spirit of happiness. Mighty God, help us to rest in you while we wait. Help us to rest in you, mighty God, that we can come into the promises that you would have made over our life. Father God, we decree and declare that every promises, mighty God, that you have made over our life shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we come against the spirit of anxiety, mighty God. We come against the spirit of anxiousness, mighty God. Father God, when we don't see it happening, mighty God, we want to find a way of escape to please ourselves, mighty God, to please our own thoughts and, 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 and mindset, mighty God. But Father God, you have called us to honor you. You have called us to, to, to seek you always because your word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And so, Father, we thank you tonight, mighty God. Lord, as you're reminding us, mighty God, where, where, where faith is absent, um, fear is present. And so, Father God, we come against the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It will not cramp us. It will not paralyze us, mighty God. But we will arise in faith in the name of Jesus. Believe in God. If you speak it, so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, help us to be right radical in this season mighty God that we will come into the birthing of everything that you have so orchestrated to manifest over our life we will come into every plan that you have made for us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we come against the spirit of distraction in the mighty name of Jesus and we apply the spirit of discipline in this season mighty God discipline with the word discipline in prayer discipline in worship in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so, Father God, we ask, Lord, as we release ourselves to you and we submit to the Holy Ghost inside of us, Lord, let your will be done in our life on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Bless you all. Amen. 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 We spoke about discouragement.
And when we go through trials, it's easy to become discouraged. That when we go through difficulties, it's easy for us to become dispirited and to lose confidence and to lose our enthusiasm. That the enemy wants us to be downhearted, to be dejected, to, de to be depressed, to be demoralized, to be disappointed, to be despaired. But I want us to pray tonight, Lord, restore in us our zeal, our confidence, and our enthusiasm for the things of the Lord. Because we might not understand many times the inner workings of the Spirit of God through the trials that we face, then we wrongly interpret those trials and begin to lose our confidence in God, lose our enthusiasm for the things of God, lose our zeal in Him. I want us to pray tonight. Join me as we pray tonight. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we have misunderstood the trials that we go through. For you said all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. And Lord, many times when we go through these trials, because we are so focused, Lord, on the pains of the trial, because we are so focused, Lord, on the, the negative aspects of what may be happening through the trials, Lord, we begin to blame you. Lord, we begin, Lord God Almighty, to attack you, even in our prayers. We begin, Lord God, to make remarks that make you look like you're a bad father, that you're a bad master, that you're a bad Lord. We ask your forgiveness. For Lord, in doing these things, we have fallen prey to what the devil wants. Lord, in doing these things, we have fallen prey, Lord God Almighty, to, to the enemy working through us, Lord, to subtly blaspheme your holy name and your holy purposes. So, Father, we ask your forgiveness tonight, even as we have come into, Lord, alignment with the understanding of your word. Father, we ask your mercy. For many times, Lord God, we have prayed, even quoting back your word to you saying this and saying that and saying that you said this and you said that and you promised this and you promised that and lord we forgot that we read james chapter one we forgot lord that you said we should be joyful when we fall into trials, we forgot that you said that we should know this. You did not leave us ignorant. You did not leave us in the dark concerning why you have led us, Lord God, into these various things. You have not left us, Lord God, in the darkness concerning why these things came upon us. You said these things were to try our faith. Because it is working in us patience and it is going to have its perfect work so that we will lack nothing. So that we will be perfect, mature, entire and wanting nothing. So Lord, we ask your forgiveness. I ask your forgiveness, Lord, on behalf of love and faith, on behalf of your people, Lord, on behalf of my house, Lord, on behalf of the many houses that are present here, the many families that are present here, I ask your forgiveness. And I pray tonight, Lord, that you'll remove from us the spirit of discouragement. Father, there are some of us, we have been going through some things, Lord, for quite some time now, some for years, some for months, some for weeks, some for days. And Lord, we have become discouraged and we have not understood why the time of these things have not been shortened or come to an end. It is because the work, Lord, that you're trying to do has not been accomplished because we have retaliated against you, Lord, by becoming downhearted, by becoming dejected, by becoming depressed, by becoming demoralized and disappointed, Lord, and ending up in despair. But you said, Lord, we should count it all joy. So tonight, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll restore the zeal of the Lord. Restore the zeal for your house. 
Restore the zeal for the word. Restore the zeal for your spirit. Restore the zeal, Lord, for the things of God. Bring back our enthusiasm. Lord, I remember, Lord, in those early years, Lord, when we would have just given our life to Christ, we were enthusiastic to learn about you. Lord, we were enthusiastic to learn about the word. We had zeal to do things and to, and to work in the house of God and to do things for the kingdom of God. But Lord, as we began to mature, not realizing that we are maturing in faith mighty God and the trials begin whether Lord they come to us or we are led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit Lord God Almighty we Lord become disappointed in you Lord we become dejected Lord we begin to lose hope and lose faith and question Lord what you are doing in our life did you not say to Jeremiah shall the potter say to the clay what are you doing do you not have the right to break the clay, to mold it, to shape it. Lord God, in whatever you want, Father, we have been wrong in the way we have dealt with the various things that we have been going through. We have been making statements that you are not able. We have been making statements by our attitude and by our actions Lord, that you are not able to do exceedingly abundantly. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us of our sins, for we have sinned against you. We have sinned against you, Lord, because our eyes have been blinded by our own desires, by our own lusts, that we could not see what the Spirit of God was, do God was doing in our lives. Father, we submit to you tonight. We pray, Lord, that even as we submit, Lord, our faith in you be restored. Our zeal for you be restored. Our enthusiasm for the things of God be restored. And I thank you, Lord, that our heart right now is going through spiritual surgery. That, Lord, the seeds of discouragement that the enemy has planted and the fruits of discouragement called dejection, depression, demoralization, disappointment, despair right now will fall off our heart and be burnt with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the inner workings, the surgery on our character. I thank you right now. The Lord, there's a restoration Lord, of the patience of the Lord that is being worked inside of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. And amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there is one more prayer I want to take from my list of prayers tonight. Lord, grant me the spirit of understanding so that I may grasp clearly what the Spirit of God is doing through the various situations of my life. I want to ask Sister Alicia, if you could be so kind to pray this prayer over us tonight. Lord, grant me the spirit of understanding so that I may clearly grasp what the Spirit of God is doing through the various situations of my life. Sister Alicia, are you able to do this for us? Hallelujah. Good good evening, everyone. Um, Prophet, can you repeat the prayer point for me, please? Sure. It's right here in the chat. Lord, grant me the spirit of understanding so that I may grasp clearly what the Spirit of God is doing in the various situations of my life. Thank you. Thank you, Prophet. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory, mighty God. We thank you, Daddy, for the ability to meet one more time, mighty God. On a Monday evening, on a Monday night, mighty God, where we can gather before you, mighty God, and to 
consecrate ourselves mighty god before you one more time in prayer father we thank you for the gift of life for health and for strength we acknowledge your presence tonight mighty god and we thank you that indeed you are a good god let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts mighty god be acceptable unto you O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Father, we just want to honor you tonight, mighty God. We want to thank you tonight, mighty God, that there are different situations and circumstances that we're going through, mighty God, in our lives. But we honor you, mighty God, that indeed you are God. And everything, mighty God, will work out for our good in this time and in this season mighty god father there are different situations and circumstances that are happening in our lives mighty god and we have asked you questions we have come to you mighty god in the quietness of our closet lord and we have petitioned the heavenlies mighty god there are situations lord that bombard us mighty god some for many years lord that we have not come into the understanding of mighty god there are questions that we have asked mighty god that we have not received the answer for but father tonight we thank you for this word on patience we thank you mighty god though that though the physical situation mighty god may look a certain way with our physical eyes I thank you, mighty God, that in the realm of the spirit, that you are doing a mighty work in our lives, mighty God. Father, I pray that wherever the enemy, mighty God, would have clouded our eyes so that doubt may come in. He would have clouded our eyes, mighty God, so that we do not understand what is going on in our lives, Lord. Father, we pray tonight for a spirit of understanding. We pray tonight, mighty God, that whatever situation that we're faced with, mighty God, that is acting as a distraction in our lives, whatever situation, mighty God, that is acting as a stressor, mighty God, to our mind, body, soul, and spirit, that mighty God, you will give us understanding tonight. That mighty God, we will be aligned with the heavenlies, daddy. That God, when we go to our beds to sleep tonight, mighty God, you will give us a different level of clarity, oh God, so that we can understand that the situations and the circumstances that we go through, mighty God, they are only for a season father your word says mighty god that there's a time and there's a season for everything and i thank you mighty god tonight that though we may go through difficult situations and circumstances mighty god it too as a season father i thank you tonight mighty god that as a reminder through this word you are calling us into a different level of patience and understanding. Uh, that mighty God, our spirit man, will be in a state of rest and harmony and peace. Mighty God, sometimes the situation is comes, mighty God, to take us out. The situation comes to rob our peace. The situation comes to rob our joy. The situation comes, mighty God, wanting us to lock ourselves into a room, mighty God, because it seems, based on what our physical eyes may see, mighty God, like it is not going to change like the solution is not going to come. But Father, I thank you that as a result of this word tonight, mighty God, that you are asking us, mighty God, to take our faith to another dimension, to take our faith to another level, mighty God. Father, we pray against that spirit of doubt, Lord, because when the situation knocks at our door, mighty God, and it comes to take us out, Lord, Father, I pray for a spirit of resilience, mighty God, upon the body of Christ, that though the situation may come, mighty God, though the situation may look
look this way. Father, I thank you, mighty God, that there is this confident assurance that we have in you as our covenant keeping God, the God that has worked many miracles before, the God that has done it for us before, you can do it again. Father, we pray, mighty God, for that spirit of understanding to rest upon us tonight like a mantle. Mighty God, we are praying tonight that wherever, mighty God, there are every bricks that has been laid upon our shoulders, mighty God, with the weight of life, with the, with the challenges of life. It may be work-related. It may be family-related. It may be some form of illness, mighty God. But Father, we are speaking to the challenges that exist in our lives, mighty God, and we're giving it a time. We're giving it a time frame, mighty God. We're giving it a season. We're declaring that the season will come when it shall tarry no more. Father, we're giving it a season, mighty God, when it shall tarry no more because you are calling us, mighty God, into a season of the honey, the season, mighty God, when we shall smile again, the season, mighty God, when our spirit man shall be up again, the season, mighty God, when our hope shall be restored again. Give us a different level of understanding in this time, mighty God, that though, mighty God, the thing that we have asked you for, though it tarries, it must come to pass. Because your word says, mighty God, that whatever you have spoken, Lord, it must come to pass. Your promises towards us are yes and amen. And so it must come to pass. Oh God, you have said in the book of Isaiah that we should not go by what our physical eyes will see or what the, the, our, our physical ears will hear. But Father, we are asking you, mighty God, tonight that our spirit man will be so charged that you, uh, you will give us a different level of understanding, mighty God, so that when the situation, Lord, wants to go over into a state, mighty God, where it pressures our mind, mighty God, we will remain in a state of calmness. We speak stillness, mighty God. We speak peace into our atmosphere. We speak joy into our atmosphere. We pray tonight, mighty God, that though, mighty God, the promise may tarry, your peace will envelop our hearts. Your joy will envelop our hearts. Mighty God, we are declaring tonight, Lord, that whatever we are going through, mighty God, whatever our individual situations look like, we thank you tonight that you are enveloping us at different level of patience, mighty God. May the spirit of understanding rest upon us. May the spirit of understanding dwell upon us, mighty God, so that the various situations that we face, Lord, you will give us peace in the midst of it. And so we give you glory tonight for this word, mighty God. We thank you tonight, mighty God, that as the word comes and as we depart from this platform, Lord, that you will give us a different level of patience. We give you all the glory tonight. We give you all the honor and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Thank you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Well, our time has gone tonight and there are still yet many more prayers what i'll do i'll post them in the chat for you and i know the host will post them on our facebook channel so that you can in your own time as you may re-listen to this message we'll also pray the prayers that go along with it we will continue next week by god's grace as yes. we dive deeper into this aspect mm -hmm. of patience. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Reverend Jeff, over to you, woman of God. Thank you so much, Prophet. So when we started, I said that we should put on our seatbelts. No, I'm so sorry I said that. Because I was the first one who wanted to take off the seatbelt and to disembark in thin air. Praise God, praise God. 
But I want to thank God that these processes that we go through, it is for our good. God is totally good. There is no fault in our God. The Bible says there's no darkness in him. So if he leads us by his spirit into times of trials, he knows when to take us out of the trials. He knows how to make us smell as if there is no smoke, as if we had not gone in the fire. My God, have you ever seen some people? They're going through some desperate situations, and yet you say to them, but you look so good. My God, how you look, sir? And then you tell them, it is God. It is God. And I am so grateful to God for this prayer time. So, Father, we want to thank you that as you lead us through the month of October, Lord, that you will use this set-apart time, this time at the altar, to take us deeper into you, where you put boundaries, my God, in our spirit, man, boundaries not, not to contain us or to restrict us, O oh God, but boundaries to guard us, to guide us, to keep us from falling and fainting. My God, yes, Lord, boundaries to cause us to be sober-minded, to cause us to dig deeper in you, to cause us not to be superficial. For when we go through testings and trials, we cannot afford to be superficial. It causes us to dig, dig deep and lay foundations on Christ Jesus. My God, my God. Yes, thank you, Lord, for putting boulders in our spirit, man, for granting us backbone when we go through these times of testing. We are able to lean harder on you when we know of a certainty that our dependence is on you. For if we lean on the arm of flesh, we will certainly fail. Thank you, Lord, that you expose us to the light, my God. You expose us, my God, to the light of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the darkness in us will have to flee, my God. Yes, Lord, when you expose us to the light, oh God, we are able to come clean before you, Lord. There is no place to hide. There is no deception that can stay on the inside of us. My God, we have to say, I yield, I yield. We give over to you. When we go through these times of testing, oh my God, it allows us, my God, ah, to put away pride. Oh, it is so subtle. It creeps in the very DNA, oh God, of our lives, my God. But we are able to put it away. We are able to see pride for what it is. And we are humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We bow before you, knowing that you are our maker. Oh God, the deep dependence comes upon you and you alone. When we cry out to you in our distress, my God, my God, there the Spirit of God comes and oh, and uphold us by your righteous right hand. My God, my God, we have no crutches on which to depend. We have to cry out to you, Lord. Hey, Lord, we cannot get to trust in the arm of flesh when we are going through the trials. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we cannot trust in man. We have to cry out to God who alone can save our soul who, can, who alone is able to save us oh Lord God Almighty we want to get grade A we want to come to the top we want to get uh, to hear well done the good and faithful servant enter into the rest of the Lord but we don't want the process the trials take us through the process oh God when we go through the process 
oh god we cling to you in, in a more desperate way lord we walk through the process with the holy spirit and we obey his uh his word we cannot depend on ourselves or on our fleshy wisdom or on our earthly wisdom or on our earthly knowledge we have to hear from you my god in the process oh lord we lean heavily upon you and we learn obedience my god we learn obedience we are tempered my god we are tempered by you we are tempered in our inner man we are tempered in our soul we are tempered in our spirit it's as if my god uh, my god you take us uh, through through the the iron smelting of furnace ah uh, uh, and your hammer out uh, my god all the kings my god you hammer out all the rough places uh, my god and you fashion a work of art you you fashion by God our our spirit man uh, into that which conforms to the will of God and the purpose of God until we look like Christ until we look like you oh God my God my God oh uh, we we do not like the process we do not like the process Lord God Almighty, but thank you that even as we go through this tonight, as we go over this message tonight, as we go over this tonight, Lord, you show us to ourselves. You show me to me. You show my brother to my brother. You show my sister to my sister. Oh God Almighty. Yes, yes, Lord, your dealings, ah, oh, your dealings, oh God, ah, oh, are good dealings, for there is no darkness in you, no darkness in you at all. So we give you thanks tonight, Lord, for where you are leading us. Yes, Lord, and we know that you are able to do the exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ever ask or think or imagine, my God. Yes, be exceedingly, abundantly above. Yes, Lord. So that you, Lord, will get all the praise. Be glorified in us, mighty God. Be glorified. Take all the glory, for we must look like you. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your manservant. We thank you for his family. We thank you for his pouring out. And we thank you for your giving back to him and restoring, oh God, in all his inward parts. We thank you for the grace. Hallelujah. The prophetic grace, the apostolic grace, the teaching grace, the prior grace upon his life. We thank you for every single member. We thank you for the members of the team tonight. Team nine, who are not well. Lord, we thank you that even now, the, the trial of their fate, they're going through the process. And you will not, you will not leave them, Lord. You want, to, you want them to know tonight that they are in the process and that there are others praying for them. We pray for Georgia Scott. We pray for Sonia Hyde. We pray for Stafford Hyde. We pray for Margaret and George Scott. We pray, my God, for all the members of Team 9 in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, to the end that they be established. To the end that they will not fail. To the end that their faith will, would not be shipwrecked, but that they would be strengthened in their inner man. Oh, God. And that they will give you all the praise and all the glory. To you be the honor now, God, in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much, saints. God be with you. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, on Monday nights, please invite others and log on. Things are happening and we are a part of it. God bless you. Good night.